Okay, let's take a look at something a little bit different, but still quite similar. Let's say x squared times x to the third, all raised to the fifth power. Okay. Now in this case, you can sort of view this as sort of the distributive property for exponents. This 5 is going to end up being multiplied in to the 2 and into the 3 uh, separately, and then you can simplify from there. Actually, there's a number of ways you could do this problem. I'm going to show you a couple different. Let's do it the way I just told you. Let's say I can do that. The first one is going to be x, and then 2 times 5 is 10, times x, and then 3 times 5 is 15. Here we've sort of distributed the 5 into the exponents. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15. And then uh, in the final solution here, um, you just need to add the exponents because I've got x is the same thing and they're multiplied together. So 10 plus 15 is x to the 25. Okay, That's how to do it that way. Now let's say you tackle it differently. Let's say that I want to simplify the inside first. So going that way, I can simplify this by saying this is x to the 5 because the same base and then 2 plus 3 is 5 and this is raised to the fifth power. And you see in this case 5 times 5 is 25. Same answer either way. So it's really not any different. Okay. Um, let's say I've got something like 3z times z squared times z to the third all raised to the fifth power. Well, this one, I'm, I'm definitely going to simplify the inside first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simplify these z's by adding the exponents together. So what I'm going to have is, in the inside, 3, and then I've got a z, a z, and a z. And so I can simply add these exponents. So 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. So I've got 3z to the 6th power on the inside, and then I've got a 5 on the outside. And so I was able to simplify this by simply adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 gives me 3z to the 6, and then I've still got my 5 sitting out there. Um, now, in order to simplify this, okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, it's sort of the distributive property. This 5 is going to be distributed into the 3, and it's going to be distributed into this z to the 6th here. So I'm going to end up with 3 to the 5 times and then what I have here is z to the 6th to the 5. And so this is going to equal 3 to the 5 times z to the 30, because 6 times 5 is 30. And you can just do 3 to the 5 in your calculator. So if you're going to really um, do this, you know, you'd, you'd go you know, 3 to the 5th power in the calculator, and it would be some number in front of z to the 30th. Now this looks complicated, but it's really not. Remember, all I did was I simplified these z's, and I put it in there. And that was all raised to the fifth power. And remember, any time you have um, extra things multiplied by each other inside of here, the 5 is going to kind of distribute in, just like it kind of did up here. 5 times 2, 5 times 3. So in this case, I've got 3 raised to the fifth power, because that goes in there. And then I've got z to the sixth raised to the fifth power, because it's distributed in there. In this case, this simplifies to 5 times 6 is 30, and then I just leave my 3 to the 5 out because I don't have a calculator handy to simplify that. The basic rule of thumb is if you've got multiple things multiplied together inside of some parentheses and you've got an exponent hanging out, you know, you're raising the entire thing to some power on the outside, that exponent is going to be sort of distributed in and everything on the inside is going to be raised to that power. Okay. Um, and a good example of that is the following. This is a good example of that. Let's say we have r to the third times r squared raised to the fourth power times r to the third r to the fifth raised uh, to the second power. Well, I've gotten things. There's two ways I could do this problem. I could simplify the r's on the inside and simplify the r's on the inside, and then I'd have an easy problem. But I'm going to do it a little bit different way. I'm going to distribute this exponent in. So I've got r to the third raised to the fourth power times r squared raised to the fourth power. And then over here, I've got r to the third raised to the second power. And then over here, I've got r to the fifth raised to the second power. All I've done is take these exponents and kind of distribute them in accordingly.
Okay. R to the third raised to the fourth power is R to the twelfth, because three times four is twelve. The next one's gonna be two times four is eight, so it's R to the eighth. The next one's gonna be two times three is six, R to the sixth, and the final one's gonna be five times two, which makes R to the tenth. Okay. Uh, and then all you really have to do at that point is uh, add them all up. Okay. So what I'm going to have here, these two, I've got r to the 12th times r to the 8th. These two right here, they're going to go r to the 20th. Okay. I've, got, I've still got my r to the 6th, and I've still got my r to the 10th. Okay. These two are going to give me r to the 30th, r to the 6th. All I'm doing is adding 20 plus 10. And so in the final solution, it's going to be r to the 36th power. Okay. It's really not that bad. Okay. All I did was I distribute this exponent in both times. I have it all multiplied, because remember, it's all multiplied together. And then I simplified each exponent separately, and then I can simply add the exponents because all the bases are the same. So I just added them all. I did it in several steps because it's easier for me to add in my head if I add certain things together. But if you had a calculator, you could just go 12 plus 8 plus 6 plus 10, you get 36. Okay. I think that's going to about do it for how to handle exponents raised to exponents. So the basic lesson in life here for this this class of problem is for, you know, backing up a second, for exponents that are kind of added together with other exponents, you can, uh, I mean, multiplied together with other exponents, you can you can add the exponents together. For exponents that are raised to other exponents, you simply multiply them together. Now we're going to do, um, we're going to do a little bit of the same stuff, but I'm going to introduce division here as well. Okay, so let's say we're going to work a little bit with mixed variables. What if I have x, y to the third? Okay, now these variables are not the same. They're multiplied together, but they're both raised to the third power. And we kind of alluded to this in the previous lesson, but the way you handle this is everything in here has to be kind of distributed and raised to the third power, like that. So what I'm going to have is x to the third multiplied by y to the third. The three just goes in. Okay, what if I have r to the third times s squared all raised to the second power? Again, I've got r to the third raised to the second power, because I distribute this two in. This quantity is raised to the second power, multiplied by s squared quantity raised to the second power, because this thing is going to be raised to the second power. And then when I simplify this, r to the third raised to the second power is r to the sixth, because two times three is six, multiplied, and then s to the second power raised to the second power is going to be s to the fourth. And just simply writing this together is r to the sixth, s to the fourth. Okay? Now what if I have something like negative 2 r squared s to the third t all raised to the third power. Again, everything in here is multiplied together. I can't simplify the inside at all, okay? Because they're all different variables. We've got a 2, an r, an s, and a t. There's no way I can simplify this, but when this exponent gets applied to the whole thing, it's applied to each thing individually, kind of like the distributive property. So what I've got is negative 2 raised to the third times r squared raised to the third times s cubed raised to the third times t raised to the third. And all I did here was take each individual term and raise it to the third power and they're all multiplied together. You can simplify this. Negative 2 raised to the third power is negative 8 and you can convince yourself of that by taking negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 and you do that and you'll get negative 8. Okay, multiplied by, and this is simplifies and it goes to r to the 6th because 2 times 3 is 6. The next one simplifies as s to the 9th because 3 times 3 is 9 and the next one simply stays as t to the 3rd power because that's pretty much all there is left is the t to the 3rd. So it's not too bad. 
Now we're going to do some things with division. We've learned how to how to handle exponents when they're multiplied together. We've learned how to handle exponents when they're raised by other exponents. Now let's figure out what to do when exponents are divided by other exponents. Um, and this is going to be kind of kind of the same thing. But before we get there, I'm going to going to show you how to handle something like this. What if you have a divided by b, and this is raised to the third power? Now this is interesting, and it's a little bit different than when they're multiplied together. You still need to distribute the 3 in, the exponent 3 in, but the way it ends up working is you put an a cubed on the top and a b cubed on the bottom. So anytime you have a fraction in here and you raise it to a power, the top is applied to that power and the bottom is applied to that power individually like this. And then the result is divided. You know, you do the a cubed and the b cubed and you take the division of those two and that gives you the answer. We'll do a couple more examples. Let's say you have x squared on top and y to the third on the bottom okay and then you raise the entire thing to the fifth power well the top needs to be raised to the fifth power and the bottom needs to be raised to the fifth power so in this case I have x squared on the top raised to the fifth power and on the bottom I have y to the third also raised to the fifth power because remember top gets raised by the power and the bottom gets raised by the power on the top I'm going to be left with x to the tenth because two times five is ten and on the bottom I'm going to be left with y to the fifteenth because three times five is fifteen so all you really do there is you apply the exponent to the top and the exponent to the bottom when you have it like that it's not really too different this is a little bit different so let's say you have something like um, negative 2a on the top over b raised to the fifth power okay um, well how am I going to handle that I gotta raise the top by the fifth power and the bottom by the fifth power but the top is a little complicated so I'm gonna take it step by step on the top I'm gonna have negative 2a raised to the fifth power on the bottom I'm gonna have b raised to the fifth power because I've got to apply the power to both both of them all I need to do is figure out how to simplify the top and we already learned how to simplify the top in the last part of the lesson because I've got this this exponent of 5 that's going to distribute into the negative 2 and it's going to also distribute into the a so I'm going to have is negative 2 raised to the fifth power times a raised to the fifth power because it goes into both divided by b to the fifth power and that's really the answer and if you wanted to simplify it even more you could take this negative 2 and put that in your calculator and raise it to the fifth power um, uh, you know and then you have a number here a to the fifth over b to the fifth so that's pretty much how you handle the fractions it, it's not that different than, than when they're just all multiplied in there together it's just basically when you have a fraction you you, you set the top you know raise the top of it to that exponent and you put the bottom of it to that same exponent and that's how you simplify those now let's use all of the tools that we have learned and let's try to to go ahead and proceed further what if you have something that looks like x to the fifth over x to the third how do we simplify that? Now this looks a little bit different. We don't have some fraction that we're raising to a power. We have x to the fifth and we are dividing it by x to the third. Um, and this is going to be one of those few times where I'm going to actually try to prove something to you with kind of making it long and then I'm going to just show you the shortcut. Okay. First of all, the answer is the quote shortcut to remember is anytime you have the same base on the top and the same base on the bottom in a fraction and you're raising the top to an exponent and the bottom to an exponent you basically all you have to do is take the difference in the top and the bottom you take 5 minus 3 and that's going to be the answer so it's going to be x to the 2 okay that's going to be the answer um, you know, so it's not really that difficult you can see that there's some symmetry here sometimes you add the exponents sometimes you subtract them sometimes you multiply the exponents so it's really not too many things to remember it's just that you can you can imagine it as as this let me prove to you why this is the case let's say we were going to take take the top what is the top x to the fifth is x times x times x times x times x like that five x's 
divided by 3x's, x times x times x, okay? And you remember what we said about fractions a long, long time ago when we first learned fractions with numbers, is that anything common to the top and anything common to the bottom, you could kind of erase, okay? Um, and in this case, I've got 3x's multiplied together here, and I could cancel them out with three of these x's here because I'm taking this and I'm multiplying it by three, you know, x cubed basically, but then I'm going to turn around and divide that by x cubed. So it's like taking it's like taking 10 and multiplying it by 3 and then dividing it by 3. Well, the 3's don't matter because I multiply by 3 and then I turn right around and I divide it by 3. Here, I'm taking these two x's, x squared, I'm multiplying by 3x's and then I turn around and I divide by 3x's. So these x's don't even matter. And that's why you can simplify this and these two x's are left over and it gives you x squared. Okay. So anytime you have exponents common to the top and the bottom, you can eliminate what's common. And the way you do that in the shorthand is all you do is you take the difference in the exponents and that gives you a 2. Okay. And let me just show you uh, real briefly something that's going to kind of blow your mind a little bit. What if we have it in the reverse way? What if instead of this we had x to the third over x to the fifth? Okay. We do it the exact same way, okay? except, uh, I mean, we cancel the x to the third, and we cancel the other x's there, and we subtract them. It's just that now the x to the squared goes on the bottom, okay? Because the bigger number's on the bottom, so that's how you do it. And another way of doing that, let me just show you, show you one more thing kind of while we're at it. That's kind of hard to remember sometimes, but if you can remember this, all you do is you always take the top minus the bottom. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, so that's x to the negative 2. Okay, what the heck does x to the negative 2 means? Let me show you another little trick. Anytime you have a negative exponent, and we're going to learn this later in the course, anytime you have a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over the positive of the exponent. Okay, and if you recall, that's the exact same answer I told you about. We can cancel these three x's, we cancel the three x's on the bottom, and so we have a 1 on the top, and we have an x squared on the bottom. Okay. Let's move on. I don't want to beat these two examples too far into the ground because we're going to do so many examples here you know, right now, and we're, I think we're going to get it real clear. I just wanted to kind of introduce those concepts. Um, let's say we had something like y to the third times y to the fourth over y times y squared. We want to simplify that. Well, let's go ahead and simplify the top y to the third times y to the fourth is simply y to the seventh because 3 plus 4 is 7 and on the bottom I've got y to the third because 2 plus 1 is 3 now I've got this and I want to simplify it the answer is going to be y 7 minus 3 gives me 4 is y to the fourth okay and notice the bigger exponents on the top and the smaller exponents on the bottom so I'm left with that okay so all you do is you, you subtract the top minus the bottom and you put it there. If you end up subtracting the top and the bottom and you get a negative number, well then you just put that on the bottom. So let's continue with more examples. Let's say we had 12a squared a to the third a to the fourth over four parentheses a to the fourth all squared. Well, the top is easy. It's 12, and I just add these exponents up. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, so 2a to the ninth over. And then I've got a 4, and then I've got a to the fourth power raised to the second power, which is a, and then 4 times 2 is 8. Okay? Um, now, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so I can just write a 3 out there. I can get rid of these numbers. And likewise, I've got an a to the ninth and an a to the eighth. And the way to simplify that, 9 minus 8 is 1, so I've got a to the 1, which is implied there, so it's just 3a. Another way to think about this simplification we're doing here is I've got something common on the top and something common on the bottom. So I can divide both sides. Remember, any fraction, you can do anything you want to the top and the bottom as long as you, as you do it to both sides. So if I divide the bottom by a to the eighth, I get 1, and if I divide the top by a to the 8th, I've got the 9 minus 8 gives me the 1, so that stay there. 
But the easiest way to remember it is just when you have something common like this, you just subtract them and you put the number there. Okay? And like I say, I've got four or five more examples of this right now so we can kind of get more comfortable with it. And, and we're going to, you know, if you feel like at the end of this lesson you don't quite understand that part of it, don't worry because we're going we're gonna to be doing this in a, probably every lesson from here on out. Let's say we have a, b squared raised to the third power all over a, b squared. Well, that if I, if I simplify the top here, I've got this quantity raised to the third power, so the 3 gets distributed in. So I've got a to the third, because that goes into the a, and then I've got b squared raised to the third power. I'm going to skip one little step here and just write b to the 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. And on the bottom, I'm just going to have a squared times b squared, because the 2 goes into either one. Now here's where it becomes interesting. I've got a third b to the 6 over a squared b squared. So I've got a is common to the top and bottom, and b is common to the top and bottom. So 3 minus 2 okay, is 1, so it's just going to be a to the 1, which is a, b, and then 6 minus 2 is 4, so b to the 4. So you just look at the, exp the, the bases that are the same, you take the exponents and you subtract them, and that's how you get your number. Okay? What if we have 20 times r to the fourth, s to the third, raised to the fourth, over 6, r, s to the third, raised to the third. Okay? So then what we're going to do first is we're going to take care of our numbers. Remember how we simplify fractions. I can divide the top and the bottom by any number I want as long as it's the same number. In this case, I'm going to pick uh, 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm going to simplify that. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is take care of this fraction. I'm going to distribute this 4 in as an exponent. I'm going to get r to the 16, because 4 times 4 is 16, times s, 3 times 4 is 12. All I did was move the 4 in and I multiplied them over r raised to the third power, because the 3 goes in, and then s rate goes in and, and the 3 goes in, and so 3 times 3 is 9, so I've got a ninth power there. Now again, I've got r's on the top, 16 r's in fact, and 3 r's on the bottom, and I've got 12, uh, 12 s's on the top and 9 s's on the bottom, so I could simplify this. I'm going to keep my 10 thirds over here just like that, and I'm going to have r to the 13, because 16 minus 3 is 13, times s, and then 12 minus 9 is 3. So I just subtract them. And that is the answer to that. Okay. Moving right along. Two more problems. We're done with this section. Let's say I've got 17 over 34 x to the fourth y to the third all raised to the eighth power over parentheses x to the fifth y squared all raised to the fourth power. First I'm going to deal with my numbers. 17 goes into 34 two times so I can first of all write this as one half because 17 divided by 17 is 1 and 34 divided by 17 is 2. Now I'm going to deal with, with these things here. I'm going to distribute this 8n because I've got to deal with the parentheses first. Distribute this 8n. That gives me x. 8 times 4 is 32 times y. 8 times 3 is 24 divided by x. 5 times 4 is 20 times y. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay? So, so far so good. Okay? Now, notice I've got 32 x's on the top and 20 x's on the bottom. And I've got 24 y's on the top and 8 y's on the bottom. So I'm going to just go ahead and carry my 1 half, okay? And that's going to be 6. And I've got 12 more, x to the 12, 
y to the 16. Okay? Because I've got 5 times 4 is x to the 20, and then 2 times 4 is y to the 8th, and then 32 minus 20 is 12, and then 24 minus 8 is 16. So that's going to be the answer. So all you do is you, you use your distributive thing as you need to, and then when you get it in fractional form like that, you can just take your common terms and start subtracting. too bad. Last problem in this section, let's make it a good one. Let's say I have parentheses y to the third times y over 2 times y times y squared parentheses all raised to the third power. Now remember back when I have a fraction in here I need to raise the top by the same power as the bottom. So we're going to take this real slow step by step. I've got um, y to the third times y, and I'm going to raise that to the third power on the top, and then I've got 2y times y squared, and I'm going to raise that to the third power on the bottom. Now notice, I could distribute this 3n just like I did before, and this 3n just like I did before, but notice that because I have notice that because I have y to the third there and y there, and I have the same base, I can simplify the inside before proceeding by just adding the exponents. So on the top I'm going to have y to the fourth because 3 times 1 is 4 and again that's going to be raised to the third power. On the bottom I'm going to have 2 raised to the third power actually I'm getting ahead of, my, I'm getting ahead of myself, just, just scratch that. On the bottom I'm going to have 2y to the third raised to the third for the same reason. All I did on the bottom was I carried the 2 and then I simplified these y's. 2 plus 1 is 3. And I raised it to the third power because you've got to keep that. Now let's proceed. y to the fourth raised to the third power is y to the twelfth because 3 times 4 is 12. And then on the bottom this 3 needs to be distributed in because there's two things in here being multiplied together. So I've got 2 raised to the third power and I've got y to the ninth, because 3 times 3 is 9. Okay. Now, for the y's, I've got 12 y's on the top, and I've got 9 y's on the bottom. 12 minus 9 is 3, so I've got y to the third power over, don't forget about your 2, 2 to the third, and if you multiply that out, that's 8, because 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so I've got 8. And that's the answer right here. So in this lesson, we have have you know learned a lot of different things, um, you know, and uh, it's all been about exponents and how to simplify them. And so before we leave the lesson, I just want to just write a few things down. I didn't want to write this at the beginning because it can kind of scare you off, but I want to I want to have it all on one on one slide so you can kind of write it down and study it. If you have x raised to the nth power times x to the nth power, that's simply equal to x to the m plus n. Okay, and that's kind of like x squared times x is x to the third. All this is saying is I've got two powers of x, two and, th and one, and I can add them and get the answer. Okay, so that's how you do that. Um, if I have something like x to the m raised to the nth power, that's the same thing as saying x to the m times n. And that one is kind of like x to the third raised to the second power, which is 2 times 3 is x to the sixth, the same thing we were doing earlier. Okay. Next, if I have something like x times y raised to the n, that's the same thing as x to the n, y to the n. You distribute the exponent in, and that one's kind of like if I have, uh, you know, x, you know, uh, y raised to the second power, that's x squared, y squared. The 2 just goes in. Okay? And then also if I have um, x over y raised to the n, that's the same thing 
as x to the n over y to the 